This thing that keeps popping up in the corner here, I just can't get rid of it, so it's being annoying. Um, but when, when we talk about plumbing in buildings, um, I guess the, the, main, the main thing is, yes, we, we defer all that to the plumbers primarily, the, the decision making around pipe sizes, supplies and, and all that sort of stuff, we, we let them decide because they're going to decide that anyhow and they, um, they're, they're putting the name to it so they'll be doing that anyhow. But what we need to do as drafters and designers is ensure that there's adequate space left for doing all these things, that we don't just go designing things where we've given no thought to services and where the services are going to run. So we have to think about sizes and we have to think about depths of floor, etc. In, in some areas, just to make sure that, that A, when, when we're on site, that um, things are getting, aren't getting chopped through that we don't want chopped through, joists and, and things like that. And in the plumbing code, it specifies where plumbers are actually allowed to cut through, etc. But that's not always what happens. Sometimes we get stuff, you know, significantly compromised structurally because because of choices that uh, people installing services on site have had to make because these things weren't thought about at the design stage. Um, you also want to ensure that when things are being constructed, look, it it happens that. Um, that designers, architects, engineers and whatever are called up during construction to say, how do we resolve this? What are we doing here in this bit? Yeah, that happens, but really it's best practice to try to minimise any of that. A construction that goes through from stop to finish without any of those pauses in between while various different trades are sitting around twiddling their thumbs waiting for decisions to be made and details to come back, um, they're, the best, they're the best projects. So, we want to try to stop that from happening. So a little bit of understanding about plumbing is an important thing um, to try to get that, uh, to work those into the building. So with, with, our, with our building project, it's not, you know, yes, we've got, we've got a building that has existing plumbing in there and you've also got stacks of space. It's not really the sort of project you have to think about, okay, this is where we have to run pipes. This is how we solve this. It's not going to be, not going to be tricky at all because you've just got so much space to work with. Um, but we still need to go through that process anyhow of working out where the pipes are going to go, etc. just for the, the sake of you guys um, getting an introduction to that. The plumbing code is broken up into several sections, much like other, well, the Australian standard for plumbing is broken up into several sections, much like any Australian standard. So you would have noticed that from, from parking, was that uh, 2890? I think parking is. Um, you've got you know your standard 2890.1, which is just general, and then 2890.2 for disabled access, etc. Same sort of thing with plumbing. You've got um, AS 3500 for plumbing, and then AS 3500.2 specifically for the drainage side of things. So we've got um, point 0.1 for the supply, and then point 0.2 for drainage. So that's the bit we're going to be concerned with. So, so it's not just AS3500 we look at, but AS3500.2 for the drainage. Some important um, aspects about, well, just some, some real basics is with plumbing, you'll need to, you need to have a vent on your system. Vents ensure that water doesn't get sucked out of all the traps and if because if the water gets sucked out of all the traps then you get bad smells coming back through your plumbing. Does everybody know what a trap is? Should I draw don't know what a trap is? Well, let's let's have a look. So various different different types of traps, but they rely on the principle of there being a maintained water level. So, so a section of piping shaped like this that ensures that that bit stays full of water. The reason we want that bit to stay full of water is because if that bit didn't have water in it, then all the bad smells, so this is, this, is, this is downstream from plumbing, all the bad smells will make their way back through this pipe and come up inside the building. So you have that, that water lock 
to stop all that, all those air vapors coming through. Um, yeah, and you've got yeah, got various different different uh, traps. So it's maybe maybe Mary, you uh, you've got P traps, and what's the other trap? S trap. We've got S trap. Oh yes, yeah, S trap shaped like come down. Um, it goes down. Yeah. And then back. Yeah. Yep, like yeah, like that. Yeah. Yeah. So that will maintain water in yep. that bit there, like that. So S S most trap and that one. Like yeah. That's some toilets. A lot of toilets now. Most toilets now those are S traps. Uh huh. Um, yeah. Uh, just depends, like in a building, maybe more P's because then yep. you go into a wall because there may be access from behind for the inspection points and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. So that's yeah. Yeah, and that's how. So that's how you think about the difference between an S trap and a P trap is. The direction the end pipe is going to be running. So yeah, where, where you can have your access, your inspection opening in place. Yeah. So yeah. with something like your, your S trap, um, yeah, um, often you have your uh, inspection point somewhere below it. Mm -hmm. But also yeah. then it may come out the wall as well. But usually your, your traps like that then go down and they're connected into a T. Mm -hmm. uh, like a tree looking thing. Yes. It yep. has multiple outlets yes, yep. and everything's connected then into that. So your yep. shower will have a small um, trap. Mm -hmm. Your basin doesn't have to have a trap. Yep. Your basin can you just go, go straight, straight into, into that. I thought the shower can go straight so into your, your floor, floor gully as well. Well, the, the gully is yep. the trap. Is a trap. Yes, yeah. A flood gully mm -hmm. is a trap of sort. Yep. Um, but like your actual, if you look in your sink, if you open your cupboard, you'll see there is a yes, trap in the pipe trap. anyway. Yeah, yeah. So it's only kitchen sink, they're just directly on it. But with things like showers, it's down underneath and it's in the after plumbing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so you have your various traps so that you've got that water um, caged. Yes. You've got the smells. Yeah. And then that all goes into a tea, like a, we call it a tree or a tea. Yeah. Sort of thing. It's more like a tree because it has all these multiple outlets. And yeah. It goes down. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but those are also called gullies as well, aren't they? Or not? Uh, I don't the tree? No, they're not called a gully. Right. The tree's called a gully. It could okay. be. Yeah. It could be. Yeah. Oh. All right. Okay. You just call it a tree. Oh, yeah. Well, I just call yeah. It a tree. Yeah. 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 Wait, but, when Rod yeah. Boyd would pause, I'll grab me one of those trees. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But the basic, but the basic. So you've got two types of traps: S trap and and P trap. They include water in there. We want to ensure that water stays there. To, to create um, that, that blockage to ensure that bad smells don't come back through. So we have vents upstream in our plumbing run to ensure that n not all of that water gets sucked out. Also, another essential thing in a, in a run of plumbing is an inspection opening. So plumbers need to be able to get, get in there to, to, to run you know, things to clear out your roots or to pull blockages out, do all the sort of messy stuff. You need to have an inspection opening adjacent where a toilet goes into your um, your plumbing run. So wherever you've got a toilet coming through, you've got to have, have an inspection opening there. And then somewhere in your run of plumbing, you've got to have an overflow relief gully as well. The choice about and this is as far as I can understand, there's more I can certainly learn about this, but as far as I understand, the choice of your location for overflow relief gully is anywhere that you can ensure that that overflow relief gully is 150 millimetres lower than your floor level. And so, so when we're thinking about outside of the building, if you've got a section there where your overflow relief gully can be 150 millimetres lower than your floor level, that's where you that's where you put it. Any other factors that go into choosing location of your overflow relief gully that you know of? Or I think it has spot? to be within a certain distance too. Same with the vents, they have to be within a certain distance. Oh yeah, thirty meters though. Is it thirty meters? Yeah, I think it's thirty meters your overflow relief gully has to be within thirty meters. Okay, I I won't comment. I'm Look, not sure about that. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I don't yeah. remember. Um, basically, yeah, it's just in case the sewer backs up. Yes. It's going to come out through your floor. Yes, it comes out outside comes out the building. There, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So the yeah. So the um, yeah. The, but you can have the, those. You can have like a tap above that, and it can be like a drain. Yes. Yeah. You, yeah, yeah. So it's not like some point that just sits out randomly. You actually can make it a usable point. Yes. Yeah. 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 So probably everybody has seen an overflow relief 
gully before. They're, if you look at them from the from the top, typically you've got this flat grate type thing on the on the top of them like that. Um, but that's that's there just in case there's a blockage in our pipe work back here somewhere. It can all spew out of this thing. And sometimes outside. they're ceramic. Sometimes it's just around ceramic. Mm-hmm. With a metal grate in it. Oh, the, the old, really the old, old ones. ones. Yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And so you need to incorporate those things in your plumbing run. You need to have a vent. You need to have an inspection opening. Um, at, at whatever intervals, I think that's 30 metres as well, but don't don't quote me on it, I'm not a plumber. Um, but you do need to have them where you've got your toilets coming in. So, so you have to have an inspection opening at that. And those inspection openings have to be the same size as the drain that it's inspecting. So if it's a 100 mil drain you're going into, then that inspection opening has to be 100 mil. So to get... So there's a whole host of uh, okay. Go away. All right. Um. Why are we going to 164? So there's yeah there's a whole host of um, interesting information within um, the Australian standard for for plumbing, but. One of the one of the things that helps you helps you work out um, first of all the size of your pipes is in this section here, page one sixty six, fixtures and appliances. So if you go straight to that, so page one sixty six, fixtures fixtures and appliances, it gives you the sizes of the pipes that are required for the various different sizes and the sections of the Australian standard that relate to those pieces. So, so if you're thinking, oh, I've got this and I'm, I have to design this or I have to think about this particular thing, it's good. Um, yeah, uh, fixtures and appliances is a good place to start and it gives you, gives you direction from there. So let's say, for example, we're including an autopsy table in one of the, one of the units. We come come to here. Okay, each autopsy table shall drain through an untrapped waste pipe not smaller than 50 millimeters and a maximum length of 1.2 to a flushing floor waste gully and outlet not smaller than 65 millimeter pipe. Um, but yeah, we've got also so basins shall be fitted with 40 millimeter trap and waste pipe not smaller than 40 millimeters or connected to a fix connected as fixtures in pairs. In accordance with clause 6.5.4, so we go. Oh, okay. We're installing a pair of them. Let's go check that bit out. So this will give you your your sizes of your general sizes of pipes for your for your plumbing. Don't go. You don't need to go specifying your size of pipes um, and leave that leave that up to the plumber. But this gives you about an idea about how much space we have to include and what. Um, and yeah, like what what do we have to think about in regards to that to that plumbing before it actually goes to the plumber? Beyond that, got next handy section. So we've got section three drainage design. And within that, we've got size of drains. We are not going to be working through this to size up sizes of drains. The only important bit that I wanted to pull out of here is that a main drain, the minimum size of a main drain should be 100 millimetres. So we're not messing around with, with any of that, but all of, your, all of your pipes will make their way to a main drain which you know has to be minimum size 100 millimeters, but it, it may end up may end up being larger. Then, once we've had a look at our various different types of drains, our our size of the drains from from looking in that uh, that section on page 166, we also have to think about minimum grade of drains. We have to think that 
where they come out of the trap, then they've got to grade from there. And so on page 21, table 3.4.1, we've got uh, our minimum grades of drains. So for your various different drain sizes, you've got the minimum grades that they have to be at. And then Page 32. And finally, this bit is a bit in, is, is also an important consideration in thinking about your, your plumbing design in regards to the length of, of run for various different um, uh, fixtures before they have to go to a vented main drain. So with our, with our building, We'll have, let's say we've got a bathroom here, like that. We've got a, a shower happening here, in this bit. We've got toilet happening here, this bit. We've got a hand basin happening here, in this bit, like this. And then we've got a floor trap here. Our typical way of running plumbing, and Mary, you might have something to say about this as well, and we're not welcoming any of that, but we've got a join into our floor trap and then go to our 100 mil outlet at our toilet. So our toilet goes straight into our 100 mil outlet, but our shower joins up with our floor trap here, our basin joins up with our floor trap, that floor trap goes, joins up with that. We have inspection opening there, like that, and then this thing will be vented at the head of that, that plumbing area. That's pretty much how you yeah, and the reason do it, Mary. Is, the reason is because you've got the shower water and the basin water helps keep that sewer flowing better. Right. If you just had your sewer water caught up, then it can kind of like, because you don't can, go as often. Yes, yeah, it can it clog can, up and dry yeah, up. Yeah, and, dry yeah, up yeah, and yeah. They keep constant flow of water going through. It helps to flush the system regularly. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. And also, uh, um, you, you go into your floor trap here because if, in case there's there's any issues, it comes up your yep. floor trap. Yep, correct. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So, and, and the reason I, reason I drew that and, and pulled that out is because we've got this limitation here about the length of these pipes before they go joining into a, a vented plumbing run. So, with this bathroom here, that's not an issue. We've got our main drain just outside of this toilet here. It's going to be, you know, three metres max from the doesn't, shower. And does not connect directly to the toilet? The toilet comes down at the pipe. Yeah. And it comes and it down comes and joins in. into the toilet pipe further around. Yeah. The sort of thing. Yeah. 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 Not directly on the... No, okay, yeah. Should, yeah. 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 I won't draw that. But yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, that's a good point. Um, but, so... With this, with this diagram here, typically it's 10 metres from any fixture. It can, it can be in an unvented drain before it has to join up the vented drain. If we're dealing with more than 10 metres, then we have to vent these drains somehow. So if, we're, if we've got a multi-unit building, for example, and we are, we're... Got, we've got all these branches happening, so these plumbing branches, before they join up to a main drain, if it's going to be 10 metres more from that point to the main drain which is vented, we'll have to vent those those bits somehow. With our, with our project that we're dealing with, probably don't, that's probably not going to be an issue. Right? 10 metres is a long way. Um, if we've got our, got our main drain happening in the centre there, where all our branches go into it, it's not going to be an issue. But Certainly in some developments it is going to be an issue. So you're going to have to think about how you go venting those, those branches before they join in to a vented main drain. Um, and that's, yeah, that's all that I'd organised for, for thinking about the, the design of, of, this, of the plumbing for this building. So, so in, in summary, we've got all our smaller pipes joining up to our typically our 100, 100 mil that comes out of the toilet or just after the toilet so we've got 100 mil coming out 
when they join up just after the toilet, we've got an inspection opening there. So we'll have to be able to incorporate that into the design somehow. Where do we, how do we have an inspection opening there? And then that's going to be joined into a vented main drain, which goes down and joins up with our sewer. In, yeah, in the, in the situation of our building, that's going to be, be super simple. But yeah, Mary, anything you think is all important to add in regards to design of plumbing that I haven't, that haven't been covered in that? Yeah. 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 Cool. Well, your vents can run up through walls. Mm hmm. Sometimes. Yeah. Because um, yeah, usually your vents only have to be uh, uh, 50 mil pipe. Yeah. So you can uh, hang out through the middle of the wall. There's space for that to happen. Yeah. 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 Okay, so yeah, so oh, so inside a building, for example, if you yeah. had to vent inside yeah. a building, you can. So in one of the internal walls, yes, you run the vent run through, through that, the, uh, and then yeah. pop it out through the roof. Yeah. 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 Right, that's. Yeah. yeah, if you got more than ten meters. Cool. All right. Usually, your inspection points would be. Um, you put an inspection point somewhere like in this, these locations. Uh huh. Yes. Because you've got a T there. Right. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, just in that instance, um, so like if you've got a really long length, you might have several. Yes. A really long length. So if there's a blockage somewhere, you've got a few access points to, to go through. Yeah. 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 And you find your blockage is easier too. Yeah. You open the vent. Nothing. Yeah, so yeah, then it, yeah, 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 and and if the minimum, I don't know if the minimum requirement is thirty meters, but if it is thirty meters, yeah. it's a long way to to yeah, yeah send something to yeah. find a blockage. Well, on a house site, you'd have them cut. That wouldn't be thirty meters no, apart, no. But yeah, commercial maybe. I don't know. Yeah. 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 There's problems, and I mean, in commercial, you get people doing flushing stupid things out. Yeah. Yeah. You have kids at home flushing stupid things out. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, you generally you have one somewhere not far from the toilet. Yes. Yeah. Because if something gets flushed down, usually that's where the blockage happens. Yeah. Yeah, but then you also get blockages happening at these yeah. T's, and that's that's also and where the you location. And into your common effluent, usually you put a, uh, an inspection point somewhere yeah. there. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I think yeah. that's mandatory. Yeah. To have that. Yeah. Yeah. It says somewhere in the in the in the plumbing code that if if the wastewater authority doesn't install an inspection opening at that junction, then you yeah, have you to have install, install one. one. Yeah. 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 But where in the AS? I'm not entirely sure. And if you got septic tanks. Um, I've got a tank that always handles full tea. Yeah. 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 Because yeah. you've got the two outlets, you've got a front and a rear outlet. So if you put one on either side, it's a problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah you've got two. two. Yes. Yeah. 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 Y